So we're ready for our demonstration. And sure. Jane, would you introduce oh, us, okay. please? Oh, and is she ready? <laughs> Emily? Mr. Ford? Yes, sir. All righty. Um, put Emily up. They don't even see my mug anymore. Just seconds. Well, uh, I met Emily in 2018 at the Utah State Symposium. When I met her, she was wearing a T-shirt that says, I love wood turning and Kurt to hear. <laughs> and I'm like, this is this person and I need to get to know each other. Uh, and uh, she is more commonly known, if, you, if, you, if you're on Instagram, as She Turns Wood uh, and is a delightful person to know and uh, turn. She's another redhead too, so she's nothing but trouble, but that's that's beside the point. Uh, but uh, I will turn it over to her. She's going to be doing some rattles and I believe some tops as well. Yep. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, groovy. Hi, thank you, James. I appreciate that. Um, actually, when I met James, I was a blonde. I have since <laughs> invested in some artificial intelligence and I'm really grateful. So thank you very much. I'm excited to be here today. I am actually in Kirk to hear shop today because my IRD is not set up at home yet and he was kind enough to let me hang out in his shop so I'm very grateful for that thank you Kirk and James is correct I'm going to do some tops and some rattles I will actually start with tops because if you can turn a top you can turn almost anything because if you can turn beads and coves you can turn anything you set your mind to so that's what we're going to start with I am on a VL 300 which is what I actually have at home the one I have at home was uh, very well trained by Kirk, actually, and I'm very grateful for that. Um, I'm going to reach back here and grab a tool rest. So, and can we turn it on so I can hear if there's questions? No. Nope. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> no echo. Okay. Never mind. So. Um, but you got a laugh out of that. I'm going to start with my little step center. I'm going to put that in my chuck and so I can put my uh, wood between centers. And this is my the lazy man's way to do this because I hate taking my chuck on and off. This is how I do it at home. And I will switch views so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to center my piece of wood. This is just some silver maple. Emily. Right? It's, ma it's maple. Emily. Whether it's silver, Norway, it's, it's a oh, wood. There switch. is a question. We need to switch the camera view. We still see Emily. You don't need to see what she's doing right now. <laughs> Not yet. Yes, we're getting we there. <laughs> you don't want to just stare at my face? There. <laughs> so this is some silver maple. I've got it between centers. And yes, my chuck is on. I've got my step center in my chuck, nice and set. We're just going to turn this, round this out, put a tenon on it because I am lazy. I rough everything out at home first, and then I um, that way I can just throw it in check because turning a top between centers is not impossible, but it's incredibly difficult. So I'm gonna I'll tell you the tools that I'm using as I'm using them. I'm starting with my Hamlet roughing spindle roughing gouge, which is one of my favorite tools in my shop. I recently purchased one of these, and when I say recently, I mean in the last three years. I've been turning for about eight years. And I should have popped this in the first 20 minutes of turning. This is a game changer and I love it. And no, they're not sp sponsoring me today, but they have before. And it really is a tool that I just, I love. So I'm just getting comfortable with this lathe. I'm very familiar with it at home, but I'm in a different shop today. And I'm very, again, very grateful. But I have turned in the shop more than once to make sure that we're all set up. Oh, and he even set up for spindles. It's like he knew what I was going to do. So we're just going to round this out. And safety wise, at home I would wear a full face shield with a respirator. Since I am demoing today, I will just have on my safety glasses, which are my regular glasses. But at home, yes, please, please, please pay attention. Uh, to what you're doing and be in charge of your own safety. That's very, very important. For check, make sure we're true. I've got one flat spot. 
And we're good to go now. I did what I needed to do. It worked. <laughs> I'm getting grief for the grind on my tool. <laughs> Other, worst things have happened, I promise. Anyway, we're going to throw this in the chuck. Yay. Just a piece of silver maple. And we're going to do a color texture top today because we can. I will actually start off by just showing you the basics of turning a top because tops are so much fun. When I started turning, I had very young children at home. I still have young children at home. My kids range. I have six. They range from 15, and my eldest daughter is 15, and she actually is in a play tonight that opens tonight, and I'm missing that because I forgot that tonight was that night. Oops. My mother is there in my stead, and I appreciate that. <laughs> but um, I have a 15-year-old. I have a 12-year-old. I have two nine-year-olds and two almost eight-year-olds, so we stay fairly busy at our house. So, But I have a child who was born with a birth defect um, called Pierroban Sequence. His lower jaw was too small. He had his cleft palate. But part of his issue was he had low muscle tone. So part of his rehab and his uh, physical therapy was to learn how to turn tops because it really works on those fine motor skills. And as I was packing today, I failed to bring any samples. So I will just make the samples for you today. Um, again, we're, we're just roughed out. This is just a piece of silver maple. You can do this any size. I like my blanks to start out about two and a half inches for tops because you get a nice even top that way. Two and a half by two and a half by six. You'll get at least two tops out of there. Sometimes three if you fudge it a little bit. So we're turning at spindle speed. We're going at about 2,000 RPMs for this piece. And I never know that at home because I never, I don't have a digital readout, so that's why. So we're going to use our spindle, uh, 3 8 spindle gouge. I have mine ground at uh, 35 degrees. And I'm supposed to grab a different thing, but my hand works too. It's just 35 degree uh, raptor grind, and I love it. We're going to pick up our cut and lift, twist, and rotate to make that bead. See, and we're just going to go slow. I'm actually going to turn up the speed because this is way too slow for me. And I do have Kirk listening. If anybody has questions, he'll let me know what they are if anybody has questions. And we're just going to follow the grind of our tool down the edge of our top. We're just going to use that as a guide to create the end of our top. That's really as difficult as that is. So we've got that nice v-shaped top and it's just nice and smooth and we're going to do the same thing going the other direction but the opposite way and we're not actually going to make a v we're going to aim for a small uh a flat actually and we're just going to remove material and this is really good practice for bulk removal you just apply a little bit more pressure and honest and truthfully, as I do this, I, I, I turn thousands of tops a year. Thousands. I'm not even kidding. It generally takes eight of these movements to set my spindle. And then I come back to the top of my top and pull it down and remove material. Just like that. We'll do it a couple of times. And I'm going to start with a plain top. Just plain gain top. Seven eight just like that we're gonna again just move material and i like i always give a flat right here on my top because it makes it so there's no sharp edges and because little kids love to grab these it ke keeps the sharp edges away a piece of sandpaper will help with that too but i do these fairly quickly so that one little movement right here where you just take off the edge so we're not sharp makes all the difference in the world. And we do not turn uphill. We do not go uphill with our spindle gouge. Right? Right. So we're going to, we're just going to create a little flat here because it makes the top look fancy. We're gonna give it a little edge right here. So we're gonna do a pardon me this morning evening a little cove up into a elongated bead into a cove again that is the whole process of making a top really difficult 
and I'm staring at the camera and I'm on the wrong screen. Um, but know that I am looking at you. I'm going to grab a little piece of sandpaper and just touch the edges with it. And this is as much as I sand tops. Touch right there, run up over the end, over the other end, and down the spindle. That's all it takes. These are super, super quick and fun and really, really easy. I love doing these uh, when I'm in production mode. I can do these in about, well, I have done one in 11 seconds, but it wasn't one I would sell. Uh, sellable in production mode are about 28 seconds a piece. So, and that's as difficult as that is. That one will spin now. Can we all see that? Looks like a top. And yes, my lathe's still going because I'm going to do another one in just a moment. Ta-da, it spins. I'll grab the thing to spin it on even. Okay, here's my plate. I'll stop the lathe. I love that feature. Okay, here we go. It works. Fancy. <laughs> and here's the thing with tops. I keep them in my purse or in my pockets, depending on what I have on that day. And I take them with me wherever I go. And the trick with tops, you always need two so they can race. That's the rule with tops. Okay, what I want you to notice is when I was creating the spindle for the other top, I already started my next top. So it, I'm just ready to go. It's quick, it's simple, it's easy, and it's fun. So I'm ready for my next top. I'll just smooth this out. I'll take one pass over it, and then I'll start again. But this one, we're going to do color and texture on, which is, honestly, I love these because they're so fun and they're so personal. You can personalize them to whatever kid you've got staring watching at you. My kids love to come out into my shop and make these. They're like, Mom, turn it top, but don't paint it yet because I want to paint the top. I'm like, paint the top? We use markers. Dollar Tree markers are my favorite. So again, we're just going to follow the angle of that tool. We're going to clean that up just a touch, just like so. Now we're going to, again, create the bead in the cove. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, almost eight. Okay, that's going to give us our spindle in just a second. We're going to come back down, create that flat of the top, and just remove material. Okay, now here's the trick with color texture tops. We need to have a little bit of depth or girth right here so we don't throw it out of our chuck or knock it out when we're turning, uh, doing the texture. I can feel a flat spot. So we're going to leave a little bit of width here, right here. Ouch, still sharp. For uh, while we're doing the texture, we're going to slow our lathe way down. We're going to grab our texture tools. I have two texture tools with me today. I have the Wagner texture tool, and I use this one 90% of the time to tell you the truth. I also have the Sorby texture to micro texture tool. This one works great. They're both lots of fun. I can get, I am more proficient with the Wagner tool because I've had it longer. I've had this tool for, well, I've been turning for eight years, and it was probably five years old before that. And I've never had any issues with it. I purchased a, a like tool like this a year ago. I've had to throw it away because it didn't, didn't hold an edge. This one is still sharp and works great. So the Wagner Texture Tool, I did get it at Craft Supplies USA. It's great. I love it. Uh, the Sorby Texture Tool works really well as well. I also have the Elf. That one's fun too. Whatever you have, you can make it work. I'm going to use the, the Wagner Tool first. Speed this up just a little bit so we're less than 500. And we're going to go from one edge. And the cool part about this tool, I'm angling it just enough. But if I flip it over and angle the other direction, my lines will change the other way. So I can get lots of different things. And if I hold it flat, it does concentric circles. And if I move it while it's going, it gives me a different pa pattern as well. It's just lots of fun to see what we can do with this. I'm going to slow that down so we can see the texture right there. Um, this comes out a lot more when I put the liming wax on it. It'll be much easier to view. Um, so, and we're just gonna do the same thing on the other side of the top. But as you can see, we've got those nice clean lines. And the trick with the texture tool, you're gonna hold it, you're gonna go slow, you're gonna hold it there longer than you think you need to. 
because that will allow you to get that those nice deep grooves that you're after. And these this is so fun to play with to see what different patterns you can get. These are just so much fun. You can do the same thing with the Sorby Texture Tool. I need to take this off. I don't ever use the flat on this. It gets in the way to tell you the truth. Um, but if, if you're only going to buy one texture tool, this would be the one I would buy if you can get it. Because it just works. I've had so much fun with this tool. When I tell you that I've made thousands of tops, color texture tops with this, I'm not lying. I have probably, the other tool that I purchased um, that's very similar to this one, I've got maybe, maybe 500 tops out of. I've turned probably 5,000 tops with this one. And it's still just as sharp. I'm going to finish the back of this. Keep going. So we have a, a top to show you in just a sec. And just play with it. Play with the textures. Use some good good wood for this. Uh, I've done everything from basswood to uh, poplar to maple. I've even done them out of mahogany because I had scraps lying around. Uh, it does not work on ebony very well. I did try it once. That was a mistake. But it works on pretty much everything. And if you're gonna color, if you're gonna color it anyway, pick something you're gonna have fun with. Uh, don't waste your curly wood on this on using texture. Um, does anybody have any requests for color? Flat. Flat. Okay, I'm gonna pick then. Black. black. I can do black. Black and white's always fun. So, these are my very, very expensive, fancy markers. They're from the Dollar Tree. They're their permanent markers. They're a buck 25. They're great. I love them. And they're so much fun. And when you ruin the tips on them, you can toss them without feeling too bad. So, here we go. I heard the request for black. Plaid. Plaid. So we're going oh, to... Plaid. I'm sorry. I'm plaid? 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 Are you serious? <laughs> That's going to require work. How long do we have, guys? That was smarter. So this is the fun part. This is the part my kids come out and ask, hey, can we help with this? I'm like, well, that's my favorite part too. Well, we do it better. And they're convinced that they do. And this is as difficult as it is. You take the, the marker and just pull it up. And I like to do different colors. Uh, some of my most popular tops are rainbow, rainbow spinners because rainbows are nice. Not for any other reason other than rainbows are nice. Whatever people like to th think, they're welcome to. So just, that's it. That's as hard as that is. We're going to now take our very fancy liming wax. We're going to hope that I don't break my fingernails. This is what I was supposed to bring my skew chisel for. We're going to hand that off to my lovely assistant who has better, <laughs> perhaps. So, a knife I don't care about on the bandsaw. Say a flathead screwdriver. Um, and you guys can see that I'm fondling the top. I'm not going fast enough to hurt anything. The texture feels fun on your fingers. I, we're going at a slow enough speed. We're at 464. Nothing to worry about. I am going to use liming wax. Ta-da. But I want to tell you the trick. I didn't switch over to liming wax until about two years ago. I used Dollar Tree acrylic, white acrylic paint. It worked fine. I think the lime, liming wax gives a little bit of a cleaner edge. This means I don't have to wait for paint to dry. And if you've ever met me, you will know that I'm the most impatient turner in the world. I have the patience of a wood turner. Not a segmented turner, but a wood turner. <laughs> I have the patience of a production turner. So the liming wax works great. I, this can will last me almost a whole year, unless my daughter's turning with me, and then it lasts for about two weeks. She likes to use liming wax like she's not paying for it. I've actually just recently started using um, foam paintbrushes to apply it. 
but this works really well. You take your liming wax, you take a piece of paper towel, shop towel, rub it in your wax, like so, get a little bit, rub it around. Mine got melted yesterday, so we're hoping that the color picks up. Just enough, and you probably need to stir it up. Just apply it like so. This is as difficult as it is, guys. And really, honest and truthfully, you can use acrylic paint, you can use gilding paste, you can go all out with this. This is lots of fun. Just apply a little bit. It's all it takes. Get some of that white into those uh, crevices that we created, the texture. And I really do need to stir up my liming wax. Oops. But that's as hard as that is. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And now that, that that's been applied, we're going to, ta-da! I'll stop now that we're zoomed in. See, we can see a little bit of that. I really do need to stir up my liming wax. It, um, <laughs> in my shop, it sits on top of my really super fancy heater. And <laughs> you'll see I'm stirring up my liming wax with the end of a, a marker because the paint sunk to the bottom. Imagine that. It's fine. It works. Really, really tricky thing to do. Not difficult at all. Most of my shop pants are covered in liming wax. Very fancy. So it comes out fairly well with Tide. <laughs> in case anybody was worried. I'll just apply some of that liming wax right back on top because I want this to just pop. Oop. You good? I was worried about my fingers, not yours. I don't know how this side of the lathe works. <laughs> that doesn't, see? Let's look. See how much nicer that looks. Now it's all fill, filled. So here's the, the trick with this. We're going to finish turning the top. Turn our speed back up. That doesn't look quite right yet, does it? Wipe my hands off on my smock. That's why I just washed it. Because it looks like I've been washing my, wiping my hands off on it. We're going to finish turn this top until it's almost time to part it off. We're going to speed up the lathe just a bit. And again, just we're using our 3-8 spindle gouge that I have ground to a 35 degree angle because it allows me to get some really fine details in there. And I love it. Okay, just beads and coves here, folks. Beads and coves. Okay, we're to the point where it's almost time to part this off. We're going to take our little tiny piece of sandpaper again that I set down because I knew I was going to use it again. Ta-da! Touch that up just a, a bit. But again, I told you, we've got the liming wax here. It's a little thick. We're going to take our other piece of paper towel and one of my favorite shop things. I even brought my own even though it lives here. We're going to take some Dr. Kirk Scratch Free and we're going to rub it all over this. And that's going to make this pop. It will, see, look at the difference that made. We're going to hit the spindle. Just this, this will finish our top for us. We'll stop that before we part it off so you can see how nice and crisp that looks with a little bit of Scratch Free over that. See, that the lines just look so much sharper. I love it how that works. It's really quick, it's really easy, pretty simple and straightforward. Does anybody have any questions yet? What do you sell those for? Why isn't it plaid? Because the request was put in too late and it wasn't submitted, the form wasn't submitted in triplicate. Sorry. <laughs> so we're just gonna part this off now. There was one other question. What's the other question? I apologize. What do you charge for those tops? What is the cost per top? We have a, a big wholesale buyer. Okay. Uh, it's 10,000. 10,000 tops. Uh, for the color texture tops, uh, for wholesale, it's $5. Uh, for my regular normal tops, it is uh, $3 per top. <laughs> if that answers that question. <laughs> So we're going to part this off. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, we just need a credit card, right? Yeah, just just Venmo, she turns wood, and send me your address. Uh, for $10,000, it will be about two weeks. 
<laughs> okay, that's a lie. It'd probably be about four, but it is possible. Just let me know. Uh, you can Venmo me at She Turns Wood or PayPal as well. <laughs> Our donations accepted. Yeah, donations are totally accepted. Just She Turns Wood. I'm easy to find. There's a picture of me on both of them. Red hair, goofy smile. That's me. So we're just going to part this off. I'll show you the top of the top. Ha, 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 ha. The top of the top. This is as fancy as we get for fixing the ends. It takes three swipes of the thing. Here's the top of our top. There is texture there, believe it or not. And here's the bottom of our top. And do you want to know if it spins? Yes. Take our lovely cutting mat right here. Set it right here. Testing. And it works. It would work better if I wasn't warping it, but they spin. And the fun thing about these is they also spin the other direction. They'll spin like mushrooms and they'll spin just like a top. It's hard to do them when you're holding it up, though. <laughs> okay, now here's the reason you're all here tonight. We're going to get started on our captive ring baby rattles. And I want to tell you the story about how I got into these. When I began turning, I was married to a man who had a wood lathe. And we were expecting our first child together. And I was so sick. But he'd go hide in the shop for hours and hours on ends. I had something called hyperemesis gravidium when I was expecting. And that means I threw up my entire pregnancy. The entire eight and a half months I was pregnant, I puked uh, 15 to 30 times a day. Well, since I couldn't do much other than puke my guts out, I watched lots of YouTube. And I found somebody that turned a uh, captive ring baby rattle. And I went, I want one of those. Well, I don't know how to do it. I don't have the right tool to do it, is what I was told. And I went, fine, I'll figure out how to do it. I almost purchased the captive ring rattle, but they wanted $45 for it. And remember, this was almost eight years ago, and $45 at the time was beyond my comfort zone for something that my dog was probably going to eat. <laughs> so I opted to purchase the captive ring tool <laughs> because... Well, if he could do it, so could I, right? I'm going, I'm just getting set up for my captive ring rattles. I have this beautiful piece of, I have this beautiful piece of maple burl that we're going to hopefully make work. If it doesn't, I have another piece of just straight silver maple that we can use, but look how pretty that is. I just snagged this at craft supplies, but if I'm, Completely honest, most of my blanks come from a cut above bowls. They do do spindles. I don't like telling people that they do spindle blanks, but for you guys, I'll let you in on that secret. I love the spindle blanks from them. I love their bowl blanks. Um, just as a heads up to everybody. Do I keep knocking my mic out of place? I apologize, everyone. I am just getting this between centers because I failed to do that when I roughed out my other piece. And again, just quick and easy between centers. This is a little bit larger than a, the blank I typically use at home because I literally snagged it right before I came because I forgot to pack a couple of things before I left my house. My husband was kind enough to show up early getting home from work, so he distracted me while I was packing. Wanted to talk about what the plans were for tonight, and I went, I'm not home. What do you mean you're not home? Um, I'm demoing tonight. Oh, I forgot. He's a sweetheart. But here we are again with this maple burl. We're just going to rough it out. Again, we're going to use our one and a quarter roughing gouge by Hamlet. And it's going to drive Kirk crazy because I don't have it ground the right way. It gets the job done. It moves wood. Makes me happy. I love that hum. You turn the machine on, it just goes. Makes me happy. I'm just feeling how this wood feels. 
I'm going to stop and look at it, see if there's anything I need to be avoiding. Okay, I've still got a ways to go, but I wanted to look at it, see if there was any voids I need to avoid or any soft spots. We're looking good so far. I'm going to slide in just a touch, make sure we're not touching anything. And again, this is a little bit larger of a blank than I usually use at home. It's longer of a blank than I usually use at home. The blank I use at home is typically two and a quarter by two and a quarter by six. That gives me just the right size to rough out and bring down to the right diameter for my uh, rattle. And I'm going to s always stop your lathe before you move your tool rest. I'm going to try to be good today. I heard you guys talking about, sharpen or sharpen the tool rest, that works too. I heard you talking about shop safety, and I went, oh, probably a good thing we're not in my shop. <laughs> so we're just going to finish rounding this out. I'm looking at the blank to see if there's any places that I want to avoid or that I want to feature in my top. I'm going to just going to finish roughing this out, and we'll look at it one more time to decide where the layout we want to do. Are we going to put the tenon on this side or on this side? So we'll finish roughing this out and see what we can do. I'm just rocking back and forth as I do this, using my feet to to push me back and forth and back and forth. Looks like I'm dancing. I love turning because it gets me moving. I mean, moving as much as you, you move when standing at a lathe. But there's so much more to turning than just using your hands. Lots of it is about body movement and tool presentation. OK, we're round at this point. I can tell that we're round. Gonna just bring that over just a touch. <coughs> and we're gonna stop one more time to look at our blank. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, we're gonna look. Ooh, that's some pretty wood. I love the curl right here. We've got some spaces. Where do I want to put my rings is my question. Hmm. And what I'm looking for is, is there a wonky piece? Is there something that would look better in the handle? Um, all of those things are what I consider when I look at a blank. And I think I'm actually going to put the tenon on this side. My hand, will, my hand will be here. Sorry. When I flip it around, my hand will start over here. I'll put the tenon over here. And this is, this is my favorite part of this tool. I love, love, love this Hamlet tool. Because when I'm in the shop at home just going, just having fun, just going for it, I've just roughed out my piece. I didn't stop or anything. I had already eyed the blank before I put it on. I flip my tool over on its edge, and I use it to set my tenon. It's that hard, guys. That's it. That's all it takes. I love that. I was taught that by Kirk, and it's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite things about this because it means I don't have to set down my tool and pick up another one to create the tenon, and that just delights me, especially in production mode when I'm just going as fast as I can because that's what I do. It just It's so much fun to just whoop, and you're good to go. And then you're on to the next one. So again, if, it, if there's any questions, Kirk is here listening in. If he deems them worthy, he'll let me in on them. So it's great fun. We are going to do this between centers, even though we're not going to use this whole blank because it's way too big, too long. For it. We will part off part of that when we get to that point. And I have a marker, a pencil, right here. So we're going to lay this out. I'm going to discuss how we lay out a rattle. And since I forgot, you're going to have to use your imagination with me because I meant to bring one so I could show you. The rattles that we're going to do, we use the golden ratio, the rule of thirds, that sequencing, because it's what looks right. I have turned a thousand rattles at this point, and 
I did lots and lots. Well, how does this look? What, what, what looks better? What are we going to do? What I found was having a handle that is about one third of the rattle and the, the bobbles in the head of the rattle with the rings right here being about two thirds makes the best looking rattle. So we're going to look at our blank and draw it out. And do I do this at home? No, but do, when I'm doing a demo, I do. We're going to look at our blank and here's the end that we're going to use. Are we too far up? Okay. We're going to mark out, this is going to be the bottom of our rattle right here. And we're going to go, da, 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 da. there happens to be a handy dandy. ruler right here. Sorry. We're going to blame that on me. So six inches is about what I always lay them out to, which makes it really easy because this will be the middle of our rattle bead. So here's the bottom of the bead for the, the bottom of the rattle. We're going to have a cove here. We'll have another bead right here. This will be the midpoint of our bead. And this right here, at the very end of the six, we're going to lay it out as six inches, will be the, t the very top point of our bead uh, for the top of our rattle. Now, what does that mean? It means that we're going to have a bead, cove, bead. And in this section right here, we're going to do, we're going to make sure this looks right. Right, in this section right here, we're going to do our captive rings. And we're going to end the the bead that's at the top right here. So we've got that all laid out. It'll make more sense in just a moment. So we're bottom bead, middle bead, top bead, captive rings right here. And we're going to get to it. This is my favorite part. I love this. Captive ring rattles are so much fun. And people are always fascinated when they look at them. And they go, well, how'd you get the rings on there? How many pieces of wood did you use? Well, only one. This is all from one piece of wood. It's fun to do that. Um, like I said, I started doing this because um, my husband at the time didn't want to do one for me. So I went, fine, I'll learn how to do it myself. And I did. And I am actually very grateful to him because he got me into turning. He provided the first lathe I ever turned on. And while things didn't work out with him, I have a very, very, very adorable little almost eight-year-old and a passion that will probably stay with me for the rest of forever because I love turning. It's one of my favorite things in the world. And I'm very grateful to him for that. But on to baby rattles, because I had a baby, I got into baby rattles and I kind of made them my own. This is what I decided I was going to get really good at. When I started out turning, after I went to my first symposium, and I think I actually met James at my second symposium, I was going to be a, a bull turner with the big boys, with the big blue lathes, and I was going to be fast like they are. And then I really just stuck with spindles. I am doing bulls this year, but spindles are where my heart's at at the moment. And I think they'll probably stay that way for a while. Okay, we are going to actually get into this now, uh, keeping an eye on time. We're going to turn at spindle speed. We are at about 2,000 RPMs. We're going to start with that rolling over our bead. I need to raise my tool rest just slightly, just a little too low which works with tops, not so much with rattles. Just a touch too low. Okay, that first bead we're gonna put right here. Just rolling a bead. If you've made it this far, I hope that you can roll a bead. We're going to lift, twist, and rotate to get that bead. Just like so. Now we're gonna go the other direction because we know how, right? We're just going to lay that out just a little bit. We can see our bead right here. That's great. We're going to stop because I can't see my mark anymore. I know where in my head it should be. But here's my mark right here. I will lay that out just a little bit better. My pencil's right here. Make that so you guys can see it too. There's my other bead. The top of my bead, this is going to be the top of my bead. Not the bottom, not the but the middle, this is my mid bead. The middle of my bead, that's where that's gonna be. I think, we'll see in just a sec. Yep, that's the middle. Roll that over just a touch. I'm gonna remove all this material because it's in my way, we don't need this. When I was 
designing rattles at the beginning. I used to put a captive ring right here too, old, too, but it was a little too much. My plain Jane one sold so much better with just the three captive rings. Okay, just beads into coves, beads into coves. That's as hard as this is, beads into coves. And I'm gonna let you in on a little secret with this. I don't fiddle with this too much in the beginning because I gotta make sure that my captive rings don't break. So I'm just roughly laying this all out to start. Oh, and this smells so good. This silver maple is sweet tonight. So I'm, it's big leaf maple. Okay, I lied, big leaf maple. We're just gonna clean this up just a little bit because I don't need all this material. I don't need this, the width right here because safety wise for a kid that you're turning this rattle for, and we hope that you like the child, we want to keep them living. Safety wise, safety wise for rattles, we are going to make the rattle as big around as a paper towel tube. This is our guide, this right here. This is how big the rattle has to be in the bottom and the, and the top, not just the bottom, but the top as well, has to be at least this big because otherwise it is technically a choking hazard, which we don't want to do. So that's a really good guide. You don't have to buy the fancy guidelines on Amazon. This works just as well. And I believe that all of us have shop towels, right? So <laughs> that's just something to keep in mind. We have reached the point where we're going to use our captive ring tool. Yay! I love this. I use the captive ring tool by Hamlet. The 3 8 tool is what we use. Ta-da! It looks like a little hook. Not super difficult. Lots of people make these at home. I have a couple of handmade ones um, that I use for my ornaments. But this is my tried and true method. I'm going to show you the really, really, really hard, difficult way to sharpen this. You take a diamond hone, just like so, and pull. That's it. Just like that. That's as hard as that is. And that we're all sharp now. Isn't that ridiculous how easy that is? We're going to turn our lathe back on. And this is the part that's kind of fun. We're going to switch back to the front view first, because you have to see this part. It's, it's ridiculous, I know. I'm going to do it up here because we don't have this angle down the right way, but that's okay. So we're going to take our tool and we're going to go like this. And then we're going to go like this. And we're also going to go like this. And when we combine those motions, we'll get a really nice, round, clean cut captive ring. I know that sounds funny, but it's the footwork involved in this because we're going to move our whole body out of the way of the handle of the tool. We're going to flip the tool over. We're going to move our whole body out of the way of the handle of the tool. It'll give us a really, really nice, even captive ring, which is the goal, right? We want nice, smooth captive rings. Okay, we can go back to turning now. Okay, we're going to come in just like this. Apply nice, even pressure. We're going to bounce that tool handle up and down, up and down, up and down. Even pressure as we're going. Just like that. Now we're gonna flip it over. Do the same thing again. Nice even pressure as we go. Up and down, up and down. You'll see my whole arm is moving while I'm doing this. You'll see a little bit of smoke, that's okay. Cause we're going a little fast. I, the recommended speed for cutting captive rings is between seven and 800 RPMs, which is that right there. And when we do that, it gives us not a nice clean cut. We'll get the little chip outs, which we don't want because yuck. And this ring might not work, which is fine. This has a little bit of chipping, which is fine. Um, I'm going to get rid of that ring. That's fine. We don't need it. But I'll, I'll show you at, the, at this speed, just up and down, up and down, up and down. OK, 
Okay, we're going to stop and look at it. Again, there's chipping in this one. We're going to get rid of this captive ring anyway. And that's okay. And that's because of the figure. And that's the danger you take when making a captive ring rattle out of burl. Is sometimes the figure hates you. Yeah, we'll see what we can do. But back up and down, up and down. I will actually break this one off. We're going to speed the lathe up just a touch. And is this going to mess with my design? Slightly, but we'll make it work. Okay, we parted that off. It, it's on. It stayed on. Are you serious? That never happens, folks. Especially when it's that chewed up, as we can see right there. Look how chewed up that is. That never happens. Ever. It's just because it's a demo. The most random stuff always happens to me during a demo. Anyway, we'll get it off in just a sec. We're going to go back into our next captive ring. We're going to speed the lathe up just a touch. Just removing some material so we can get this layout right. That's going to change our design just a touch, but not too much. We'll make it work. Okay, up and down, up and down, up and down. This part is vital for a nice round ring. I'm standing way to the side here for this. We're going to spin all the way over to the other side. Again, up and down, up and down, up and down. This is those nice round rings. And speeding up, you'll be able to see that we have a much smoother surface. So when you go decide to buy your captive ring tool, do not follow the directions on the package and speed your lathe up because you will get a much nicer cut with your lathe set up. And here's the fun part about this. We are not going to cart this off quite yet because we need to sand it. We want these rings to look nice. So again, up and down, up and down, up and down. We want this to look the best it possibly can. Flip it over again. Again, here we are. It's working, it's doing what it's supposed to. We're gonna leave those attached, which you'll see why in just a moment. all the way through but not quite getting up and down up and down I'm feeling to see if I need to cry yet because I've got tear outs nope we're looking good I can feel that we're gonna stop so we can look at it <coughs> okay we've got a little bit of tear out here a little bit there it's not quite as bad as this one but we can fix that we have a very fancy tool right here and this typically only happens with burl we'll just fix those rings because we know how to turn beads and posts that's all a ring is, is a bead, a fancy bead. Just going to clean up those edges just a touch. And yes, you'll still have those nice round rings, which is the whole point of all of this. And now here's the fun part. We're going to make room for just turning that bead right here. This will be the top of our rattle. Yay. But now we get to sand. Are we so excited? I hope everybody's so excited. Because sanding is the best part of all of this, right? That's why we turn so we can sand. <laughs> Not so much. But it is a necessary evil. I sand through the grits, um, typically up to 400. Doesn't that sound like fun? We'll make it work. <laughs> can you put some more energy into this? <laughs> if you look on my Instagram, if you're bored one day in the middle of the night, whenever, you will see my children often. The baby that I started to learn to turn rattles for will be eight next month. And he likes to turn. I have another uh, Instagram that's We Turn Wood, which is my kids turning because they wanted their own. They wanted to be fancy like mom and have their own Instagram page. And they're a little spoiled, so they got one. 
which I am in charge of. They don't get to just play with it. Because safety first, especially on the internet. Okay, we're just going to smooth that out through the grits. We're going to stop, look, see how scary these are since they're burl, and it's okay. We've got a little bit of tear out here. If I was at home, I would fill the tear out with a little bit of turquoise, and then this would then be an executive rattle, which I know sounds funny. But you would be amazed at how many grown-ups like to play with these. Um, I don't recommend inlay for babies, but grown-ups really like inlay in their rattles. And since this is too pretty of a piece of wood, I'm checking the time. We're going to just double check. Now we'll make it work. Turn that back on. We're just going to finish rounding this over. There's a little bit too much tear out on this one, so I'm going to just fix that with my spindle gouge. And I don't typically have to do this. I knew that bringing maple burl to a demo was dangerous. But I really like to show off how beautiful rattles can look with really fancy wood. Um, I don't always do that because sometimes just learning the, the basics is what we want. But for you guys, I thought, well, they want to see pretty wood. So I, I grabbed a really pretty piece of maple burl for this. We're just going to fix this carefully by cleaning up these beads just a touch. Again, we're going to touch this with some sandpaper. Again, we're not all the way through, so we have enough time to sand now. This is where you want to do your sanding for your rings, because once they're off and you have to sand by hand and go up under the ring and go ah, 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 like this, it's obnoxious and it's not very fun either. So we get most of the sanding done right here while it's on the lathe, still going, still attached. It gives you, it's like power sanding. It's not like power sanding. It is power sanding. Ooh, those are feeling so much better. Okay. Those look so much better. We've got a little bit of a nick there, but that'll come out and it'll look fine. Okay, we're looking pretty good. Yay! I love this. I love to see what the wood does. It always makes me happy. I love turning these captive ring rattles because <laughs> when I started turning my... And I, I'm still this way. I hate to measure. I hate to measure anything. So my tag for my rattles were, they're all unique. Not a single one is the same because I wouldn't measure to save my life. And you couldn't pay me to measure at that point in time. I do production work now, so measuring is kind of required. But all my rattles are unique, one of a kind, because I don't measure any. And there were, there were variances. I've done so many of these now. You can um, put them up against each other, and they're twins uh steve jones on instagram did a challenge where you had to do your beads to match inside of each other and my cap my rattles match up like that he said did you do that on purpose yes <laughs> <laughs> lots and lots of fun if you're not on instagram it's great it's so much fun uh we're gonna part these off now again just with our captive ring tool we're gonna pay attention to where our tool hits because we don't want to we don't want to gouge the ring as we go. We're just going to carefully pull that through. And you'll see that I picked up a little bit of a burn line there. We're still attached so we can hit it with some sandpaper, solve that problem. It's just a back and forth process, back and forth process. And before anybody asks how fast is this at home, not during a demo, I can do a, a rattle in about 7 minutes start to finish to the quality that I'm willing to sell it on Etsy. And yes, I have turned these in my sleep, literally. I used to take Ambien at night. I came in one day. I came downstairs from bed one morning. There were six rattles sitting on my kitchen table that I hadn't turned, or that I hadn't remembered turning. I turned them the night before, apparently. So I like to tease people and say that I can turn these in my sleep. Okay, that's through. And here's the trick. People are, well, how do you get your rings so round inside? Okay, we're parted through. Wiggle it around on the spindle. Just like that. Just like so. That's it. It's nice and clean inside now. 
That's all it takes. Finish parting these off. <clears throat> And I felt a chunk come off while I did that, so I'm going to hit it with the sandpaper. And you can feel while you're doing this. And again, we're supposed to, while we're sanding, we're supposed to turn the lathe down. I can, I can hear everybody going, oh, she's doing it wrong. I'm not, I promise. I've done it once or twice. Okay. We're, it's feeling pretty good. I use my fingers a lot for this. Don't stick your fingers on turning wood. Bad idea. Don't get them caught between your tool rest either. I've only broken my finger three or four times doing that. I have a really good bad. I have a really good bad example, folks. And I keep coming back for more. So just pay attention to where your hands are. Turn that back up just a touch. We're gonna finish parting this off. And truly, I've used several different kinds of captive ring tools. And the nicest thing I can say is the Hamlet is the one that I recommend with my full heart and soul behind it. I won't say anything bad about any others, but Hamlet is the tool that I pick every time. There are other tools on the market. This is the one that I use. And I, again, I've turned hundreds, probably thousands of rattles at this point. This is the one that I like the most. That one just parted off, again, just around the spindle, super fancy. That's as difficult as that is. Are we so impressed? Yeah. I'm shaking my head up and down. I'm impressed. So it's fun. It's easy. It's quick. These are great projects uh, for grandkids, for friends that have had babies. I'm going to do the really naughty thing. Maybe. Maybe I'm not. I'll just leave it there for the moment. Of course, during my demo, the one that's broken look at that three quarters of the way through it won't finish snapping off isn't that embarrassing that's just my luck guys usually i can just snap them off haha -ha. that looks like it lives at my house they didn't see the <laughs> they didn't see let me see where are you yeah the edge of that has a little bit of a, a few chips that looks like it came from my house as far as they know, it did. It's a, it's a metal detector. It finds nails. Oh, that's the one we used. Oh, come on. Everybody's going to be laughing at me how I'm using this, but I don't want to gouge out the rest of my... There we go. It snapped. Mostly. I don't want to break my other stuff on here. There we go. Yay! I'll sweep when I'm done. <laughs> Sometimes, guys, sometimes. Murphy's Law applies to demos, correct? Yeah. Anything that can go wrong will. That is the story of my life. Okay, now we're back to our beads and coves. Really, really complicated, right? We're just going to make sure this looks the way that we want them to. This is where we can fiddle with our handle, make it look nice. And everybody's like, well, how do you get your spindle to look right? That's where, what I'm going to show you right now. See, we have... We have these points on our spindle that we can see between our captive rings. I used to call them features. It makes different noise if you leave bumps. That's not what we do anymore. We smooth out our spindles because it looks nicer. And you could, if you're feeling tricky, you can tape them to the side so they're not in your way and you don't risk snapping them off. But as we saw how difficult it was to snap one off, I just stick the tool between the rings as I go to clean it up. And then I move them out of my way. We're gonna go from a bead, roll that over into a cove and across the flat there, just even this out. And this, this rattle is gonna look a little different than most of them because I had that extra ring on there and that's okay. It's not gonna hurt anything. The proportions will just change just slightly and I can fudge that a little bit. It's gonna be okay. That's the fun part about these is you can make them your own and you can do whatever you want to make them your own. You can add lines to your rings, bur burn lines. You can do color and you can do texture on this, the tops and the bottoms. Whatever floats your boat is how you can make these. And that's so fun to me. I love it, love it, love it. 
And I'm not happy with the way this handle looks, so I'm going to adjust just slightly and pull it over. I like that a little bit more now. Just round over some of these rougher spots because now I know what... <coughs> Pardon me. I got a mouthful of shavings. Imagine that. There we go. That looks better. Okay. We're looking kind of like we've got a rattle going, right? Roll that over just a touch. Bring it in. Pull it up. Ta-da! It's like magic. See, we've got a little bump right here. That's okay. We can fix that with our gouge. And sometimes, if we have edges on our, our rattle that we don't like, we can bust out the 80 grit gouge to fix those. Rattles are really, really great for beginner beginners and for people who want to just practice the basics. Rattles are excellent to r r run you through the basics. Beads and coves. Beads and coves all day, folks. And I'm just going to remove some of this material. I'm going to keep this for inlay at a later date. So I'm just going to remove some material here so I can part that off and get it out of my way. Because, I mean, what a waste of beautiful burl to just throw that out. No, we're going to use that for something else later. Because we are wood hoarders, because we are wood turners. That's what we do, right? Depends on the turner. But I am one of them. Okay, I've got a little bit of tear out right here and a little bit right here. We'll just clean that up a little bit. We're looking pretty good, though. I'm liking how the handle looks, how that laid out. The burlk is just beautiful. That'll look really nice once we've got it all sanded up. We're going to get this really pretty dang close. I know you're all just so happy to see me. Again, just removing material. Nothing super fancy about this. I'm going to just shape the top right now because we're here and we're not in a hurry how are we on time folks i should have looked at the clock before i started i didn't oops i didn't hear what they said oh Okay, I missed what you said for time. Can somebody repeat that? I'll even stop the lay so you don't miss anything. We're all good. We're good. Take your time. We're good on time? Okay, groovy. Perfect. Okay, we're going to part this off. Now, this is the part that you all are going to laugh at me for, I think. Did I bring it? I hope I did because it's my favorite part of the whole demo when I pull out my parting tool, my super, super fancy parting tool. You can start laughing now. This is, the, this is the best part of the demo. I've got it. <laughs> this is my... I'm frozen. There we go. This is my parting tool. It came. It is by Farberware. Really expensive. 75 cents. It works just as well as any narrow parting tool I've ever seen. I've ever used. I, I've used some really fancy $45 ones. It's a little bit more than 75 cents. I am a cheapskate. I have six kids. I gotta afford to pay for college somehow. <laughs> so <laughs> this is my fiberware parting tool. We're just gonna part this off. I'm going to do it the wrong way. I'm gonna show you what not to do. We are between centers right now. We're gonna bring this in. Cut it down. A little bit here, a little bit there. Bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. And since it's burl, we're gonna release. <laughs> My whole rattle just moved. We're going to put that back up for just a sec, and I'm going to clean up the spot that I'm afraid of. So give me just a sec. Yikes. That's exciting. I saw a spot that I need to clean up before I take my support away. Because sometimes burl gets a little bit spongy. It's a little soft, and it likes to move a little bit too much when it's down thin like this. And that's all well and good, except when you don't want it to bounce away, right? So we can go back. We'll pull the tailstock away. Ooh, doo -doo. Super fancy like that. Ta-da. That was really hard, see? And now I have a really pretty piece of wood that I can use for a myriad of other things. I can use it for inlays, I can use it for 
a top where you put in a different spindle. I love doing the maple burl and ebony spindles. They're fun, exciting. But we've got this really rough spot at the head of our, our rattle now. We left enough room to clean this all up. And we're gonna actually have to support this since it is a burl from the other side. So we're gonna use two hands for this, which is really exciting, isn't it? We're gonna wrap our fingers around here. We're not going super fast. We're still, we're about 1700 RPMs, almost 18. And we're not holding on tight. We're just adding a little bit of a support right here as we clean up this end. That's all, that's as difficult as that is. And y'all can tell that if I can do it, you can do it, right? I mean, they let me handle sharp, pointy objects. So, if, and if I can do that, anybody can. So, we're looking good. Does anybody have any questions to this point? Nope, we're good. Okay, I'll keep going. Now is the fun part. We're going to sand. Oh, wait, this is the fun part? I must have done it wrong. My favorite thing to tell you when you're turning, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Turning is supposed to be fun. And ladies and gentlemen, this is actually what I do for work. I know that sounds funny that I work, my work involves turning, but this is what I do to help support my family. My husband is a mechanic and I, as I said, I have six kids at home. I have some with some special needs, as I mentioned. So I need to be available as, off, as available as I can be. So, because my one child who's had 55 surgeries on his face, um, he actually came home from school today because he didn't feel well, and that happens often. I can turn it home. It makes a huge difference to be readily available. And it helps pay for extra things, and it pays for Christmas every year, which I'm very grateful for. But it also gives me a little bit of sanity. And as I, as James mentioned, I'm on Instagram. I'm She Turns Wood on Instagram. And that is actually what gave me the opportunity to meet a bunch of people that I would have never had the opportunity to otherwise. And it lets me talk to grown-ups. I suffered from the malady of I didn't get very much grown-ups interaction uh, because I've been home with my kids for years and years and years. So this gives me the opportunity to talk to grown-ups, see people that enjoy doing same things I do, make make new friends. I will be at the symposium this year. Um, so if if you're there, come say hi. I always love meeting Turners. Clarify. I will be at the AAW symposium in Louisville in next, I guess it's beginning of June. So if anybody needs anything, holler. So they go to the important symposium. They go to SWAT. My goal is to go next year to SWAT. I just have to sweet talk my husband. I just got home from Virginia where I was teaching at a Penn Turners Expo and <laughs> I left him with the kids for a week and I'm leaving for the symposium for a week so I'm going to have to suck up a lot to be able to go next year. So, But SWAT is the one that I'd really like to go to. I've only heard good things. I've never heard anything bad about SWAT so other than it's in Waco. But I've never been to Waco so I'm totally happy going there. The only thing that's bad about SWAT is I'm not there anymore for well, craft. That's true. Kirk's not at SWAT. I'll have to bat my eyes and see what we can do. <laughs> um, like I said, may, pay attention. I'm just cleaning up a burn line because hand sanding is so much fun, right? This is the opportunity in this demo for you guys to ask questions. I will answer them. Does anybody have any? If Or am I just so good that all of your questions have been answered, right? <laughs> and we'll look at the chat too. Nothing? Chat. Nothing. Sweet. I am just that good. <laughs> okay. We got that cleaned up quite a bit. It's looking good. Ta-da. Now, we've done the sanding. We've done the hard part. How are we going to get this off the lathe? Oh, wait. The best part is still yet to come. We're going to take a piece of paper towel ta -da -da, and some of my favorite stuff. I get to Vanna White this, right? 
Ta-da! I use this on literally everything I turn in my shop. No matter what I'm doing, I'm using this. And it's not just because I like Dr. Kirk, while well, I do. Um, I use this on everything. I use it as a finish. I use it as a pre-finish. I use it for everything. It's great. It's scratch free. I get it at Craft Supplies USA, which I, I'm close to Craft. I'm only about an hour from Craft. Uh, I drive down quite often. I'm actually the president of the club at Craft Supplies. Uh, the Tim Turners meet at Craft Supplies. We're very grateful. I'm the president of that club. So I'm at Craft Supplies at least once a month, if not more. And I hope this is the one that I brought. If not, I will replace some. I know the guy. I know a guy that get, can get some. He's usually pretty good about sharing, too. And this is the best part. About it. I get a better price than you do. You get a better price than I do. So a little bit of scratch free. And if I'm completely honest, I often just apply it with my fingers because I like to melt it into the wood. And <sighs> helps polish my teeth too. <laughs> and this is the really technical way of putting it on the rings. I just grab them and roll it. After I part, part it off, I'll uh, oil, them, oil the rings down specifically with um, walrus oil, which I, I love. It's another one that I love. And I use it because it's... And you back walrus if I'm not willing to put it in my mouth, I won't put it on a rattle. If Because that's something I should cover. Four baby rattles. If I am not willing to put it on my, in my mouth the way that it is before I put it on the rattle, I will not put it on the rattle. I know that lots of turners believe that as soon as it's cured, it's food safe. That's great. I'm a mom. If I'm not willing to put it on my, in my mouth before, see? My hands have scratch free. I'm not worried about it. If I'm not willing to put it in my mouth before it goes on my rattle and I have to wait, I won't put it on a rattle. Because lots of people that buy rattles are, what's the nice word, crunchy? <laughs> crunchy, I think, is the nice word. Um, and they're afraid of chemicals and all of those things. If, if it's not this, that, or the other, they won't buy it. So scratch free is one that I use. I'll use walrus oil. And sometimes I have requests for, um, no oil at all. And then I really, really, really have to sand all the way through. I'll sand those up to 600, which is fine. But that's as complicated as this is. I'm just checking, I'm going to do a once over on, of my rattle before we part it off to see if there's anything that we need to fix. Nope, that's looking really pretty. So it's that end, we're gonna roll it all the way over, check, make sure we're looking good. Okay, this looks, this looks like a rattle at this point. We are a little bit wider here. That's okay, it doesn't look bad. We can fudge th this point right here because remember I said two th a third and two thirds. We're just a little off because I have that, had that extra ring. That happens sometimes. Um, honest and truthfully, if I were to sell this, this would be one of my seconds because of that. But if they don't follow me, they don't know the difference between this and any of my other rattles. So it doesn't bother me. If it doesn't bother them, it doesn't bother me. But we're just going to get ready to part this off. We're going to get close to the chuck here, removing some material. And this is where we're going to fudge this. I usually just part off right here, right at the ed end of this bead. We're going to actually elongate this bead just a touch, roll it down, and give this just a little bit of a rounder end than I typically do, because we want it to look, we'll give it a little bit more length, and that's okay. And how do we finish this? I'll show you in just a second. And I'm just using this as a scraper to get in nice and tight down here. <laughs> really complicated. I just took the this gouge away to blow it off. There we go. We're getting close. We'll make sure we pull that over just to bring that around. Again, just using this gouge as a scraper. Again, I have this at a 35 degree angle. That allows me to get in really tight places. We'll hit this with a little bit of sandpaper. Since, since we're here and we're still on the lathe, why not, right? It's really complicated. Now again, with our handy dandy parting tool, really our really fancy expensive one, we come in, reach around, 
Grab that. Here we go. We did it. We did it. We did it. We did it. Here's our captive ring rattle. We've got... Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> now the end. We've got that little nubbin on the end, which is not lovely. I At home, we'll take this over to my uh, drill press, which has one of those nice uh, foam pads on it that spins. And I'll just roll it over there. Get rid of that. You'll never know. And you have a really nice captive ring baby rattle. Does anybody have any questions? What is walrus oil? <laughs> it comes from walruses. It comes from walruses. And no walruses are harmed in the making of walrus oil. Walrus oil is out of <laughs> Missouri. They're a, a family-owned company. It's a mineral oil, vitamin E, carnauba wax blend. And I just like it. It gives a nice finish. It's what I put on most of my all ornaments if I want them to soak. Um, I finish my ornaments with, again, scratch free, and I throw them into a plastic bag that has walrus oil in it. But walrus oil, it gives just a really nice finish. I put it on all my salad bowls. It's one of those that, you know, what do you prefer, mineral oil? Do you prefer a beeswax mixture? Oh, it also has beeswax in it. It's carnauba wax, beeswax. It's Correct me if I'm wrong, light in color? It's very light in color. It will not change the color of your wood. It'll brighten your wood, but it will not. Well, it doesn't, tone. yeah, it doesn't, it won't take this and make it super dark, which I love. I've run into, it's like when you use wal, bleh, walnut oil on a really blonde wood, it'll give you more of a yellow tone. Walrus oil doesn't do that. It's just a nice clean finish. Not that I don't like walnut oil. Somebody's trying to break into the shop. There's something uh, brushing up against the shop door. <laughs> so, any other questions? What? Was that for me? Oh, the water soil. I buy it by the gallon. And I go through about two gallons of it a year. And I've, I've stopped counting how many bottles of Scratch Free I go through a year because my kids have taken up using it and it's just a disposable thing. It's like sandpaper now. I just know it's going to cost me. <laughs> so, um, does anybody need to see anything else? Any other questions? We haven't heard it rattle yet. Oh, I'm sorry. How's that? <laughs> I love it. And my favorite thing about this, my mother works for a company that helps children with developmental delays and adults with developmental delays. My brother actually runs the company. And she has a bowl that I made. No, she has a bowl that Kirk made on her desk because she stole it from my house that is full of rattles. And I do several different varieties of these. I do fidgets that are just little like this. We've got a major delay on this now. <laughs> I do fidgets that are just just little like this. They still have the three captive rings, and they're just round on the ends. And they're about an inch in diameter and about two inches long, and they look really cute. I use the quarter-inch captive ring tool for that one. And I do bigger fidgets that are just, ignore that, they're just this right here. Um, I actually call those the Shirley, and I donate those to the Alzheimer's Wing um, at assisted living facilities uh, close to me because they're excellent fidgets for Alzheimer's patients. My grandmother passed from Alzheimer's a few years ago, and this was one of her favorite things to play with when she was in the end stages of that disease. And they're great. So there's so many things you can do with them. Grown-ups love to pick them up and play with them. As I said, my mom works at a place, and... All of the workers come in and pick up the fidgets and the rattles and play with them. And, well, how'd they do that? How'd they get the rings on there? How'd they do that? And they're looking for a seam, and it's fun. And the tops are really good, too. Grown-ups always play with the tops as well. Um, I'm very blessed because I have lots of people that love to pick up. And wood's fun. You, people want to pick up wood and see what it feels like. Um, so it's lots of fun. I love this. This is so much who I am. My father's a general contractor, so I grew up around saws and building and everything. So this was just a natural segue for me in this part of my life, and I'm grateful for it. Does anybody have any other questions? Do you need me to do anything else? Can, can you put some more energy into your presentation? 
I'm sorry, my Red Bull is wearing off. <laughs> this is fun to me, guys, and I, I want people to be as excited, excited about wood turning as I am. And I know that's kind of silly. I was joking about that with somebody today. They're like, well, oh, I can, because I'm heading to the symposium, I had to, I found a, oh my gosh, a roommate to split my <laughs> Airbnb with. She's like, well, I can tell you're an extrovert. And I started to laugh. I said, only when it comes to turning. Otherwise, I'm hiding at home. <laughs> but this is so much fun to me. I love it. Wood turning literally saved me. It, it's my therapy. My kids really enjoy it. It's been really, really good for me in so many different ways. And I love that I can share a passion with people that are like-minded. And if you're just getting into turning, try this out. It's super, super fun. If you haven't turned a captive ring in a while, it's often what people start out turning. And I kind of just stuck with it. Captive rings are fun to try a few, but make some rattles. People love them. And new moms love them. Babies between four months and six months, that's about the right age for a, a rattle. So if you forgot to get a, a present for your new baby in your life, four to six months gives you a lot of leeway. Oh, I need to do that. So... That way you did it on purpose. You waited till everybody gave all their gifts and then you had one special for when they were a little bit older and everybody had already given gifts. So it's another good way to do that. So, well, I appreciate you taking the time to join me tonight. I really do. And I uh, need to thank Kirk for letting me be in his shop. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you for agreeing to do this, Emily. <laughs> Say that again. Thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. If anybody has any questions, feel free to message me on Instagram. Also, I'm sheturnswood at gmail.com. Instagram's usually the best way to get a hold of me. I'm Emily Ford on Facebook as well. I'm happy to go over things with anybody if they have any questions. I'm happy to FaceTime, video chat, whatever, if there's questions, because this is something I want people to try. It's lots of fun. And they're, they're quick, they're easy. And once you've turned one, you want to turn another one. So go for it. Try it. Try it out. And if you do, send me pictures because I love to share them with other people. So thank you again for having me. You guys have been wonderful. I appreciate it. This was so much fun. So thank you so much. Have a great evening, everybody. Yes.